In Parshas Yisro, the Jewish people experience the one of the most powerful moments in their history, perhaps the most formative moment, the moment in which the entire world and creation was waiting for, when the Bnei Yisrael, the entire purpose of Bnei Yisrael is fulfilled with the giving of the Torah on Har Sinai, what we call the Mamad Har Sinai. And the Torah goes into a pretty detailed description to give us the imagery of what it must have been like that day as best as it could, what it must have been like for the Jewish people to experience the Mamad Har Sinai. As all the people are gathered at the foot of the mountain, Ke'ishachad Balebechad, as one nation, as one people, they've been preparing for a number of days, preparing themselves, and there's a sense of awe and fear and a sense of joy. And they start hearing, they hear the sound of the shofar, they get stronger and stronger and deafening, and they hear the sound of the thunder, and they look and they see lightning, and they look up at the mountain in Har Sinai, and they see that it's Ashan Kulo. The Har Sinai, Ashan Kulo, Har Sinai is engulfed in smoke. Is there some significance to the place where the Torah was given to be engulfed in smoke. So Reb Nechumka of Horodna Zatzal explains that, yes, there's a great significance to the smoke, and this is how he connects it. He said that we all have an obligation to learn Torah, and there are certain types of people who have a difficulty learning Torah, and he points out that there are two particular people, types of people who have difficulty learning Torah. The first one is a person who is just so busy they have no time. They have many obligations. They're trying to run around and make a living. They're trying to support their family. They're trying to spend time with their family. But this person has a great appreciation for Torah. And any couple of minutes, any time that they get the opportunity to learn Torah, to hear a shir, to learn a mishnah, to hear a dvar Torah, they become excited because they recognize that it has a transformative nature, that they need Torah. It's their fuel in order to be able to appreciate their mission and their goal in life. So this person, although they don't have as much time on their hands, but they have a great appreciation and love for Torah and wish that they could be able to learn more and more. And then there's the second type of person. And this type of person has had a bad experience with learning Torah in the past. Perhaps they weren't successful. And this person really shies away and says, look, it's not for me. It's not that I don't have time. I just, I, I just don't connect. I just, I just can't. I can't learn Torah. So Rav Nechumka says these two people are connected to the smoke on Harsinai in the following way. You know, when you light a fire, you need fuel to keep the fire going. And if I have a fire that's the fuel is wood, so the fire is going strong, and then the wood is burning and burning, and finally, when the fire itself seems to go out, the wood smolders. Now, while the wood is smoldering, if I add some more fuel, the fire will ignite once again relatively easily. But then when the smoldering ends, the smoke starts coming up more and more, and it's a, a notice for me that as the whatever is left, as the smoldering is leaving, it's more difficult to relight the fire. Still possible, but you really have to put a great effort into it. And he says the first individual represents the fire that's still smoldering. The first individual has an appreciation for Torah but doesn't have the time. They represent the fire that's still smoldering because if they're just given some more fuel, they're able to ignite the ash, the fire of Torah within them, and the Torah is able to have a tremendous impact, bringing simcha, bringing joy and a sense of meaning to their lives. But the second individual, well, that's the fire that has been smoldering, but right now, even if we throw a little wood in there, it still needs a lot more. It needs to be completely ignited once again. And it can, but that individual has to put in a lot more effort. What we need to understand is we have an obligation to learn Torah, but our obligation to learn Torah is not just simply an obligation. Torah has a transformative nature. If we've never experienced what it means to learn Torah and enjoy Torah, then we've never really fully lived life as Jews. And it's never too late to light our fire. And for those of us who have a difficulty spending time, finding the time to learn Torah, we can't underestimate the power of the Torah that we will learn, transforming our sense of meaning in life and the possibilities of where it can take us spiritually. We're in a generation where people don't have time, yet our generation is blessed with the opportunities to learn Torah like no generation before us has ever had before, whether learning Torah by listening to an app or by learning Torah by watching on, on, on the computer or listening to a shir or hearing a Devar Torah 
or learning a daf yomi. We have so many possibilities and we're making too many excuses because there is a fire within us that if it's not lit as a fire is smoldering. We still might see smoke, but it needs to be relit, reignited to make us true people, to make us true to ourselves, true to our legacy, true to what Hashem wants from us, to take His Torah, to cherish it, to learn it and understand that it's the key for our success, our happiness, and our legacy in life. So may we be zoche to really understand what the smoke is all about and that we all have the opportunity to take that smoke and ignite it and light it into a fire that will bring a tremendous nachas to us, ourselves, and to all that we encounter. Thank you for listening, and have a good Shabbos.